It has Japanese NKK broadcast style buttons for the highest quality of tactile control. And it has a custom T-bar from Skahoy with an LED ring to color identify it. The Skahoy Mega Panel is also modular, so you can add or remove sections depending on your production size. And to bind all this together, we have Reactor, a panel management software that makes it super easy to arrange the order of inputs, for instance, on your switcher surface. For professional broadcast applications of ATEM switches, Skahoy is proud to offer the Mega Panel modules to deliver you a premium control experience. The Mega Panel has clear OLED display, so you can always see what the buttons do, what the source names are. It has Japanese NKK broadcast style buttons for the highest quality of tactile control, and it has a custom T-bar from Skahoy with an LED ring to color identify it. The Skahoy Mega Panel is also modular, so you can add or remove sections depending on your production size. The MK48 module over here is the crosspoint surface serving the input delegation, while the MKT1A or B section, those are different basically by the T-bar position, it is a transition block with keys for menu, keyers, transition selection, etc. And to bind all this together, we have Reactor, a panel management software that makes it super easy to arrange the order of inputs, for instance, on your switcher surface. In this video, we'll take a closer look at all these details on the Mega Panel. You may have seen other videos where we present the Mega Panel with other switcher applications, either hardware or software. So many of the uh, patterns we are applying in terms of the UI or the interaction on the panel is the same because we like to create a similar experience like we do on the RCP. So when you manage different cameras, you, you kind of know the game. So basically on the Mega Panel, um, which is cur uh, currently consisting of two MK48 blocks here. So we have 24 direct input selections. Oh, in fact, we have only 22 because we have decided that the last two columns here are dedicated shift keys. So we have shift key one and shift key two, and that means we can um, get ourselves up to a max of 66 inputs on the two modules here. Now, it was modular, right? So you can just add more MK48s if you want more. But for many productions, most productions I would even claim, then this is enough. We also have these displays that will show you the source names. And I want to highlight one particular feature. You see that we are able to work with UTF-8 text in the display. So regardless of where you're from in the world, we can either drag the labels out of your switch application, in this case an ATEM switcher, where these labels are actually coming from, or inside Reactor, this software, you can see that the ATEM inputs over here, they are lined up just numbered from one and then going forward, but we can actually change the label of any of these. So let's say that we wanted to overwrite input number eight here. I could just, uh, let's type in my name here and it will say Casper in this display and I can all oh that was a, too many letters in that and then I can also assign a different color to the LED here so I can color identify my channels so that's a pretty neat thing and now you got a little taste of what reactor is like so you see how easy it would be even to manage the order of the inputs because I can decide to um, make this input number eight and this input number nine, and we will see those change around here on the switcher. So um, that's uh, one thing that I can manage on this uh, surface here. Um, let's just go back here again. So obviously on a switcher surface like this, we have laid it out with a row of preview buttons and a row of program buttons as you're used to. We have the color identification, the labels of the inputs, and then we have a title line that shows you what the upper row of buttons do. So um, that is managed from the menu. If I click into the menu, you see I have a number of um, different choices for what is being applied up here. So if I press aux, then what I basically can now is to select between the six aux channels on this 2ME ATEM switcher. So let's press one for auxiliary one. And now you see all these blue colored buttons indicating that we are delegating to an aux bus. 
is uh, now delegating to an aux bus. So as I'm pressing this, then auxiliary one will be uh, delegated by a push of these buttons. And of course it matches the row of, of um, sources that I have. So if I, if I press uh, the shift key here, you see I have access to additional sources, like it could be color one. Um, now I put that on program, or I could put it on aux as I wanted to, uh, right here. Uh, these are currently empty, these slots, because I have 20 inputs and there are no more inputs on this particular switch. But we could actually quite quickly go to input number 23, which is what we have right here. And then let's reassign that to input number 8. So you'll see if we do that, um, we will now get one input source up here. The Kumo router is now on uh, this button over here. So of course I can get in and out of the of the shift layers and there's a nifty little feature here because if I press just quickly once then I'm toggling in and out of my shift layer. I can also go to shift layer 2 as you see right here and then I can toggle out of it but if I press and hold and then I release then if I hold for more than one second it's gonna be a hold and and release action on the shift keys. Okay, back to what I was really talking about, the upper row up here, then um, we have aux delegation. If I go to macros, you can play back macros on the orange colored buttons. If I go to USK, then I can delegate USK, that's upstream keyer, fill source, key source, and I do that for upstream keyer one and upstream keyer two. So let's just see how that works. Now these are changing to green. As long as they were blue, they were delegating to the aux, but now they are green. So now they are delegating to my choice up here for the key source, which is US key one fill and USK one key. And that's what I can now delegate on these buttons. Let's move on. We can see DSK, same thing. We have a downstream key one and downstream key two. Same thing is going on here that I can delegate to these by a push of a button. So that's really nice. I can do that, uh, and that does away with managing the menus in the ATEM software control, which looks like this. If you go to the switches section, you would normally have to go in here, and then you select your fill source from this list of sources and your key sources, similar way. Now, that can all be done from the panel. So that's pretty nice. Then we have user sections. This is essentially just a bank of user buttons up here that you can delegate yourself. So there's nothing delegated right now, but they are reserved for your custom features. And then if we go to the audio section, then you see we actually have a degree of audio control built in. Now, this is all happening on the four-way buttons. And if we go to the audio section here, you can see that we can actually adjust the volume of the audio channels by pressing and holding the sides of these buttons. And if I press in the other way now, I speeded it up a little bit because I am um, I basically toggle on the upper edge. There's a little icon here that brings it between fine and coarse mode, which is a function that we often apply on our um, management of parameters. So you can see that I can quickly change the, the volume of audio channels in this way. And let's just do the same over here. So that's pretty nice as well. I see the the uh, the volume in db and over here of course i have the master volume so you can see the master fader can also be changed from this key here on the panel okay the transition block is the final piece that we want to look at in this case and over here we have already worked with the menu in the menu we are still not um we haven't explored the settings a part, and I just want to highlight that we have this engineering menu where we can, first of all, change the ATEM switcher. Now, um, don't get scared about that. It's actually possible if I just go here, I could actually change to ATEM switcher number two. So it could be connected to multiple ATEM switches if I wanted to, but there's no device ATEM two. I have only one device connected, which you can also see in reactor, which you have right here. So there's uh, one ATEM switcher, but if I added ATEM switcher number two, it would be possible for me to swap between them. So um, that's that's just one thing. Let's not spend too much time on that. Then I have uh, some sleep time management features like uh, one hour is our default sleep time delay. And after 10 minutes, the panel is dimming down and that is to save your energy bill and also the uh, displays and LEDs in the product so that they will have a super long lifetime. And then I can, I can of course adjust the LED brightness um, uh, the display brightness and the LED brightness in the buttons on these buttons. So let's just exit that and look at what else we have. Now, this is transition time. So if I press the auto key, then the transition of the auto, um, we can see that happening in the software. So you see this transition time you're seeing right here 
is uh, adjustable by the, um, the edges of the four-way button here. You even see this rate is changing in the UI, so you have it also visible over here. The shift key is uh, useful. It helps you to select different things because what we have here is basically transition style. You can see that change around, but holding down the shift key, you have access to the fifth, which is the stinger in this case, and uh, it was selected right there. Um, and again, transition will apply to uh, the particular transition that we have selected. Let's go back to the mix transition. Then we have DSK1 and 2 auto. So those are selected uh, on those buttons. And you can also do a cut. So if you hold down the shift key, you just have a straight cut of the downstream keys on those two buttons. In this section, we have finally the, um, the next transition block that you have here. And that's the final thing we'll be looking at. We have um, the ability to uh, cut the upstream keyers on and off, and we can also select which one of them will go along with the next transition. So if I if I press cut, then they will be um, toggled on and off because of these settings right here. And if you want to turn on, off, on and off the background, it can be done over here. Um, so that's also possible. So all that management goodies are in the transition block here. And finally over here, we have the Skahoy T-Bar. And as I said, it has an LED ring where you can change the color in the interface. And you can, of course, use that to make your transition between your preview and your program row. So now you have seen the main components of a Skahoy Mega Panel, the transition block and the input delegation blocks here. You can extend it as far as you want. You can even remove a block so you have only a Mega Panel this size. And take a look at our frames. We have a 1ME frame, which gives you a very, very stylish hand wrist for your panel, for your modular panel. It looks so awesome with that. But even cooler is the 2ME frame that will allow you to arrange these modules in two rows. And you can extend it to any length you want because we have additional modules, not just the MK48 modules here for adding more inputs. We have auxiliary modules with joystick control. If you have PDC cameras or if you want to adjust your DVE with a joystick, there's a fader module so you can adjust our cameras from your ATEM switcher or the audio sources that's freely assignable there. There's a, a regular shot box for um, direct access to your keyers and so on. There's a lot of good stuff in those auxiliary modules, but we will cover that in a different video. I just wanted to bring you, your attention to the fact that this is a modular expandable setup and we have very, very nice mechanics to make that look cool and also really sit well together to make a single unit. Now, in terms of being a unit, one of the most important ways this becomes a unit is really the software that drives it. So I want to highlight Reactor. Reactor is the panel management software that comes along with the Skahoy panels here. They are all PoE powered. So these are just Ethernet cables going down into a PoE switch. And then inside Reactor, these three modules are currently managed by a single blue pill. This um, little product, I don't have it on the table right here because you would normally just hide it away. It has no buttons, it has a display that shows you stuff, but it's really the server, the driver, the host of reactor that connects to these three panels and also facilitates the connection to the ATEM switch. And that's all happening on this blue pill. Now, from Reactor, I'm able, first of all, to identify my panels. That can be pretty useful just to check uh, if I have all the panels lined up correctly here. So I just quickly do that so you can see this happening. But basically, I want to, and we have also looked at the inputs, right? So, um, but I want to just try and do this all over again. So let's give it a shot and set up this whole um, mega panel and, and see how easy that really is. So what we want to do now is to uh, just create a new project. And we'll call it ATEM Mega Panel. And we'll activate it. And then what happens now is that these are all blanking out. It says waiting for raw panel. It means that they are just waiting for somebody to connect to them and uh, do useful stuff. So with a fresh project, we should maybe first add the device. And let's see what we have on the network here. Production Studio 4K. I know that I have a switch, which I'll just add manually. So we can search for ATEM. You see, we have a ton of modules uh, or models we support here. So there's plenty to, um, to look at. I know that the one that we just had was the 2ME Production Studio 4K. So we'll just pick that one again. And uh, we'll put in a device IP address. 
which is in this case the classic ATEM device IP. The device ID should usually just be one. And then I'll select OK for this. We should see it connect just shortly. There you go, it's connected. And uh, I think we could even perform a little test by pushing that button. But the main point, so I won't do that now. The main point here is that I want to add panels here. So we'll just um, see we are discovering panels on the network. And I know that I am searching for MKT1. So this might be this guy. We'll just select this one as one of them. And you see that we are connecting to it. OK, that's awesome. It looks like we already connected to the ATEM switcher even. So that's even better. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because we have the ATEM switch over here. So let's just add another panel. We want to search for MK48. And we have two. Um, I'm just going to select one of them. Let's see which one that becomes. This is the first one that was selected. All right. And then um, actually, the thing is that we what we need to do here is to select the proper configuration. Right now, we have a configuration which is mega panel 1ME for ATEM small. That means just having a single module, actually. So what I wanted to do, even though I just discovered two panels, I think I just want to remove this panel and the configuration away. And then I'll use this dialog because it tells me that with the currently selected configuration, I need to add an additional panel. So I'll just quickly do that here. And now you see that we have this one and this one connected in a small configuration. So we are now, there are no warnings anymore. These two are connected and together they are driving an ATEM switcher. Let's just change this configuration over to a 1ME. Um, and that means that I am now looking for an additional MK48 panel. So I changed this to medium. And that means that we can now add the second MK48 panel. So we'll just add that panel here. We have one left that we can select on the network. And as this has now been added, we'll see that it's connecting and it is all getting ready to become the mega panel with two MK48 modules right here. So you can see that we have um, currently prepared configurations for 1ME small, 1ME medium, 2ME small, and 2ME medium, well, no, the small 2ME is not that, but there's a 2ME medium that is basically having 2ME with two MK48s and so on. We'll see more configurations coming here, often on user request, and you see that we have them also for some other switcher systems. So that's basically how Reactor binds together individual modules that you can basically snap off. They are connecting magnetically here to the side and fitting into a frame and making a single unified panel out of them. Please follow us on social media and um, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll put out useful videos that present how the mega panel and its accessory modules and so on are working with your favorite switcher systems. So hope to see you there and um, thanks for watching this video.